Liu Xiaoqi, How to Be a Good Communist Section 3, The Self-Cultivation of Communists and the Revolutionary Practice of the Masses In order to become faithful and worthy pupils of the founders of Marxism-Leninism, we must engage in all-around self-cultivation in the course of the great and protracted revolutionary struggles of the proletariat and the masses. We must engage in self-cultivation in the Marxist-Leninist theory, self-cultivation and applying the Marxist-Leninist stand, viewpoint, and method to the study and handling of all problems, self-cultivation in proletarian ideology and morality, self-cultivation in upholding unity in the party, practicing criticism and self-criticism, and observing discipline, self-cultivation in developing the style of hard work and persistent struggle, self-cultivation in building close ties with the masses, self-cultivation in various branches of scientific knowledge, etc. We are all members of the Communist Party, and therefore we must all, without exception, carry on self-cultivation in these respects. However, since party members differ from one another in political consciousness, experience of struggle, field of work, cultural level, and in the conditions in which they work, it is natural that comrades should differ to some extent in the various aspects of self-cultivation to which they must pay special attention and which they must stress. When Zhong Zi in ancient times said, I reflect on myself three times a day, he was discussing self-examination. The Book of Odes in the famous lines, quote, As knife and file make smooth the bone, as jade is wrought by chisel and stone referred to the need for help and criticism among friends. What all this shows is that very hard work and very earnest self-cultivation are essential if one is to make progress. But the, quote, self-cultivation perused by many people in the past was generally idealistic, formalistic, abstract, and divorced from social practice. They exaggerated the role of subjective intentions, thinking that so long as they had, quote, good will in the abstract, they could transform reality, society, and themselves. Of course, this is absurd. Our self-cultivation cannot be done that way. We are revolutionary materialists. Our self-cultivation cannot be separate from the revolutionary practices of the masses. For us, it is most important to never divorce ourselves from the current revolutionary struggle of the masses, but to identify ourselves with it, in order to study, sum up, and apply the revolutionary experience of the past. This means that we must cultivate and temper ourselves in revolutionary practice, and then in turn, our self-cultivation and tempering are undertaken solely for the sake of the people and of revolutionary practice. It means that we must modestly learn the Marxist-Leninist stand, viewpoint, and method, learn from the noble proletarian quality of the founders of Marxism-Leninism, and apply all this in our practice, in our words and deeds our daily life and work, constantly correcting or eliminating anything in our ideology contrary to it, and strengthening our own proletarian communist ideology and character. It means that we should listen modestly to the opinions and criticisms of our party comrades and of the masses, make a careful study of the practical problems in our life and work, carefully sum up and draw lessons from our experience in this work, and that, in the light of all this, we should ascertain whether our understanding of Marxism-Leninism and our use of the Marxist-Leninist method are correct, and check up on our shortcomings and mistakes so as to overcome them and improve our work. Furthermore, on the basis of new experience, we should ascertain whether there are any individual conclusions or aspects of Marxism-Leninism that need supplementing, enriching, and developing. In short, we must integrate the universal truth of Marxism-Leninism with the concrete practice of the revolution. This is the method of self-cultivation for us communists. It is entirely different from those methods of self-cultivation which are idealistic and divorced from the revolutionary practice of the masses. In order to persevere in this Marxist-Leninist method of cultivation, we must resolutely oppose and thoroughly eradicate one of the worst vices bequeathed to us by the old society in the field of education and study, namely the separation of theory from practice. In the old society, many people who studied thought it unnecessary or even impossible 
to act upon what they had learned. And though they had wrote and spoke abundantly of justice and morality, in fact, they were out-and-out -out scoundrels. Although the Kuomintang reactionaries memorize the, quote, three people's principles and recite Sun Yat-sen's testament, in actual fact, they bleed the people white with taxes, practice corruption and slaughter, oppress the masses, are opposed to, quote, those nations who treat us as equals, and go as far as to compromise with or surrender to the national enemy. An old Itsusai once told me that of all the teachings of Confucius, he was able to observe only this one, quote, For him, no food can ever be too dainty, and no minced meat too fine, and that he could never observe the rest, and had never intended to. Since that is what these people are like, why do they run schools and study the, quote, teachings of the sages? They are after advancement and money, use the, quote, teachings of the sages to oppress the exploited, and deceive the people by paying lip service to justice and morality. This is typical of the attitude of the exploiting classes of the old society towards the sages they, quote, worship. Needless to say, when we communists study Marxism-Leninism and all that is best in our national heritage, we must never adopt such an attitude. What we learn, we must practice. Being proletarian revolutionaries who are honest and pure in purpose, we cannot be untrue to ourselves, to the people, or to those who went before us. This is an outstanding characteristic as well as a great merit of communists. Is it possible that the old society's separation of theory from practice can have no influence on us? No, it is not. It is true that none of you students are studying Marxism-Leninism for the sake of advancement and money, and of oppressing the exploited. Yet it is possible to maintain that none of you ever entertains the idea that your thoughts, words, deeds, and life do not necessarily have to be guided by Marxist-Leninist principles, or that you do not intend to put all the principles that you have learned into practice? Is it possible that none of you ever thinks of studying Marxism-Leninism or going deeper into the theory as a means of getting ahead in life, of showing off and becoming famous? I cannot guarantee that none of you thinks along these lines. That kind of thinking runs counter to Marxism-Leninism and to the basic Marxist-Leninist principle of the integration of theory and practice. But we must also practice what we learn. And it is for the sake of practice, of the party, of the people, and of the victory of the revolution, that we study theory. Comrade Mao Zedong has said, beginning of long quote, The great strength of Marxism-Leninism lies precisely in its integration with the concrete revolutionary practice of all countries. For the Chinese Communist Party, it is a matter of learning to apply the theory of Marxism-Leninism to the specific circumstances of China. For the Chinese Communists, who are part of the great Chinese nation, flesh of its flesh and blood of its blood, any talk about Marxism in isolation from China's characteristics is merely Marxism in the abstract, Marxism in a vacuum. Hence, to apply Marxism concretely in China, so that its every manifestation has an indubitable Chinese character, i.e., to apply Marxism in the light of China's specific characteristics, becomes a problem which it is urgent for the whole party to understand and solve. Foreign stereotypes must be abolished, there must be less singing of empty, abstract tunes, and dogmatism must be laid to rest. They must be replaced by the fresh, lively Chinese style and spirit, which the common people of China love. End quote. Our comrades must study the theory of Marxism-Leninism by following the method Comrade Mao Zedong speaks of here. End of section.